What's up guys, welcome to another video here at Tansen's Welding. Today, we're gonna talk about equipment. When to buy it, when to upgrade it. Um, it's been a while since you heard from me. Uh, about three months, I think, maybe going on four. Apologize for that. I've been trying to strain out some computer issues. Um, anyways, I believe the last video you saw me on was I had just finished this. It's like a six foot break. Um, it works pretty good. Um, obviously, the thinner the metal, I can actually get six foot brakes on. The smaller the stuff, this is some uh, quarter inch plate. So you can see, it bends it. I, I mean, I did heat it, but it bends it. Um, some other quarter inch. This is one inch by quarter flat. That is um, three by quarter flat. Um, so it does work. It works just enough that um, I'm really glad I have it. And it also works just enough that I really wish I had a better one. Um, I've thought about selling it. I don't really know what something like this, a homemade one is worth, but I was at a shop. They had an old 10 foot 10 Smith in the back that they weren't using anymore. And I thought about asking them to buy it. I might still swing back and see if they'll sell it. Um, but I'm just trying to decide. Big reason is, is I'm reworking my shop layout and I'll get into that in a second. The other thing is, and many of you guys do know, um, I grew up on a farm. Um, I love welding, but I would like to do some farming of my own. So I took a little initiative this year to do some extra work. I've been cutting and selling firewood bundles, taking that money, setting it aside to cash flow a farm. Um, now I know that sounds crazy to a lot of you who might just be tuning in, but truth be told, that's exactly how I started my welding business was I saved up pennies, um, worked with the equipment I had, um, bought some, um, smaller used equipment. I bought a used generator and a new, um, it's actually sitting right there, that Square Wave TIG 200, and I went around welding a bunch just like that. Since then, I've upgraded. I've got into other things. I've bought a few new welders. We'll show you that. But the first thing I'm going to show you is, um... I was, like I said, been working on firewood bundles, selling them, and I came across this trailer that you can see behind me. It isn't the most beautiful thing. The guy was asking 175 bucks for it. So I offered him 100. They were using it around the farm. He sold it to me for 100 bucks. It is an 8 by 12, I believe. I haven't actually put a tape measure on it. Um, it came with this big long hitch on it. That's why the axle's so far forward. Because this big old guy was sitting across the front and that's what they'd hook to the tractor. That's how we pulled it home. Since then, I uh, I torched that off and welded a class 3 5,000 pound 2 inch ball hitch on it. I actually just have it tacked on there to use it around the farm. Because I'm getting some of the scrap metal and materials around here that I'm just not using anymore. Earlier today I redid brakes on my trucks, the front brakes, that's why all this stuff is still laying here. Um, we also had a trailer in last uh, two weeks ago now that got new rims and tires on it, that's why, or new rims, tires, and axles, that's why I have the old tires and the old axles just laying around. So goal for today is we're going to get all that stuff out of here. Another thing you might see is the old tool chest that was on my truck along with the old bottle rack that was on my truck. You guys have probably already seen in the flashes. I've upgraded. We'll talk about that in a second. To go back to the um, sheet metal break, um, it's been really handy. As you can see, I got the body work done on my welding truck um, for cheap. The main reason I did it for cheap was I bent my own rocker panels. They turned out pretty darn good. I bent that with the sheet metal brake that I built. And I think honestly in that job right there, because I built it mostly out of scrap metal that I had along with a few bolts and welding wire, um, it paid for itself I'd say. But uh, now let's get into the nitty grit. I want to explain a few things first. Number one. Like I said, when I started welding, <clears throat> um, I literally 
bought a used generator and a little square wave TIG 200. I could TIG weld at home with it. I could do aluminum, steel, stainless steel, TIG weld, and I would stick weld with it. I lugged that thing around everywhere. I got into doing some boiler jobs. And that's when I bought, I kept getting repeat ones. They cut, call me back doing more and more and more. And that's when I bought this Handler 210 so I could do them faster. Um, and those make up a lot of what I do. It's, it's weird um, where the stuff actually comes from, but it's, it's what I did. So I ended up selling the generator and, oh, I used to have a Lincoln, uh, what was it? It was a Lincoln Weldon Power. Super old machine, it was a 4,500 watt generator and a 150 amp welder. I converted it to DC along with the push start. I sold that to a um, lumber company up north. Um, and then I went and I bought this. And this is the Hobart Champion Elite 225. Yes, I did have to look. It has... That's 39.7 hours. I believe that is till its next service because I know it has more than that. We'll give you a startup. This is the first time it started today. Pull the choke. Push the choke in. I always put it back to idle or run. Then I wait a few seconds. And it is a actually very quiet machine. Um, stingers, and it comes with four. For those of you, for those of you, let me actually shut this off. Let me shut that off because I don't know if you can hear me or not. It comes with four regular 120 amp outlets and then two um, 240 amp outlets. This one is on a 50 amp main breaker. Um, or actually, I think the main breaker is for all of... I think this is the main breaker for everything. Um, I've never actually used this because my handler and my square wave are the NEMA uh, 6050Rs, which is what this plug is. And the only reason I know that is because I just read it right there. It has been a super great machine, super faster, super reliable, um, and like just in picking up and moving like i don't have to get there unpack tools i literally just have to pull this bungee cord and start unwrapping leads so let's talk about what we have here on our lead rack we have 40 foot of stinger that is this red cable 40 foot of black ground but the stingers and the ground come in 20 quick connect sections so there's a 20 foot from here to the first quick connect then 20 foot to the stinger and I'm actually going to get another one or two sets of the 20 foot with quick, quick connects in between. If anyone is wondering, I looked a lot into leads. The cheapest option I could find was actually just buying um, the 20 foot, I forget what gauge it is, one gauge, two gauge, I'd have to look for sure but I forgot. It's super heavy duty. Um, jumper cables nipping the ends off of them and then just buying the welding stinger ground and quick connects and doing that it is a much cheaper much much cheaper option then i have a 50 foot extension cord generally running my grinder along with our 50 foot um lp oxygen torches i swear i'm probably the only guy on youtube who is running a mobile truck with lp um these torches were actually uh, my dad's who got passed down to my brother who I actually bought them from. It is, some people have asked, a firepower torch, which I've been told, like back in the day, Victor made them. I'm not, sh I have no idea if that's true or not. But um, the tip that was on it, um, the tip that was on it, my dad had put on and it was probably older than me. He didn't use them all the time, but... Now that I'm using them all the time, like almost every job I go to, I got some new tips for them. The reason I haven't switched to acetylene yet is, well, number one, I don't do 
um, any brazing because I have the TIG welder. I could TIG braze it if I needed to. Um, and then just an oxygen bottle um, in a very, very temporary case. I'm actually going to redo this whole bed eventually because I want to convert this truck to a dually. That's down the line. Oh, I also have a 25 foot extension um, that's just a 240. Um, that way I can, well, I'll tell you that in a minute. But um, yeah, I got new tips for that, a few different sizes. It is a little slower than running acetylene. I don't know if acetylene's safer to be on the truck or not. Like I said, this is, I just threw this on like a week ago, so this is very temporary. We're actually gonna build a double rack because I wanna be able to carry two bottles and then probably one thing of LP unless I convert it to acetylene, which I, I will do eventually. Um, but then I also want it to like come up and I'm kind of thinking like in the center part because on the back side is where my um, gas tanks will sit, whether it be LP or acetylene. But in the center part, I'm either going to build a bin or a fuel tank because on far jobs... Um, it's just nice to, you know, just go to the gas station as few times as possible. And then here I want to build, it will kind of come out like this and kind of hug the side of the truck here is a, um, will be a little toolbox where I can have wrenches and stuff. And then, so I'm going to do that. And then I'm not sure if I'm going to make, um, boxes that come from the top or that just enter this way and I can get you know welding rod and stuff like that in there up here I like the idea of them entering this way on the side underneath because if I have something on top and I need something out of the box then I have to waste time to move the stuff that's on top of the box whereas if I could just grab it off the side um, but then same here this is going to become a dually we're going to put a steel deck on it and then there will be tool pouches here here and then up on the other side um, one of the main reasons I haven't switched to acetylene yet is I've been just trying to like look on Facebook marketplace and like Craigslist and stuff um, well, let's be honest nobody uses Craigslist anymore Facebook marketplace and uh, I just haven't found like a good set and I also don't know if I I know I need to change my torch head but I don't know if I need to change my torch leads and all of that kind of stuff so it's just kind of something that's on the back of my mind now I had mentioned before I am redoing the outlay of my shop all my steel is actually gonna go on a rack outside and I might build like a cover for it like just on the rack um, that way I can just put full sticks on there um, when they deliver it they can just put it right on the rack for me if they, you know, wanted to. Um, and this is actually what I'm building later today is some fab. <sighs> My version of fab stands. Um, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this threaded rod into three one foot sections. Weld this nut into some pipe. Weld some feet on the pipe and then weld the top onto another nut. And then I'm gonna, one of them is gonna hold my chop saw all the time. And my whole reason was like this whole table full of junk. I'll get into why it's so messy. This whole table that's full of junk was originally just supposed to be a chop table, but it takes up a really big footprint for something you don't do all the time. So I'm gonna build it on jack stands to where I can move it outside, do all my cold cutting out there and so on and so forth. All the steel's getting moved outside. Thinking about getting rid of that. If I do get rid of that and get a 10 foot 10 smith, um, it will, will probably, I'd have to measure, but probably go right here. I might have to shorten that table. Still have to pull that shelving out because our five by 10 fab table that I still have to put the legs on, which I haven't built. I don't know where they are. I think they're out back. We'll go right there, then I'll buy a top for it. But then right here in this section is for my next purchase, which is gonna be a CNC plasma cutting table. The reason I want a CNC plasma cutting table is to help fill the gaps. And what I mean by that is, you know, um, a lot of people know that I do mobile welding now and they're catching on that I, you know, have a shop um, but, you know, I might have 
slow times, especially winter. I don't do much. And then I can cut out signs and, you know, more precision stuff for people. Um, and it will, like, help expand me. I can get into making other things more efficient. Um, I've kind of been thinking about it. I've gotten into some manufacturing parts. And, uh, like, I have to, like, I'll buy the stock in, like, two inch, cut it down, you know, and drill its holes. And it turns into, I mean, it's one, two, three, four steps by the time I'm all said and done. Whereas if I could just load a sheet of it onto a CNC table, load a program, hit go, then I just have to deburr and package it and it's done in two steps, which is cutting your time in half, making you faster and more efficient, which is what you want to do. Um, oh, some people may have noticed there is an old acetylene tank sitting right over there. Um, I haven't taken it to my tank guy to see if I can exchange it or not because it was found in a barn, brought to me. They asked me if I wanted it. I was like, yeah, sure, why not? Um, and anyways, here it sits. Um, but that's pretty much um, what's going on around in my shop and on my rig. Um, like I said, the next thing I want to do on the rig is convert it to a dually. Um, and the big reason for that is not necessarily that I'm hauling a lot. It's that I would like the back of it to be wider and I want it to look good. And, um, we have just a lot of, uh, excavators and stuff that just run through here, which means we get a decent amount, I'd say, of DOT officers. And, uh, you just don't want anything to look out of the ordinary. Um, so it'll just look professional. I think it looks really professional now. Just another step along there. Um, as far as the shop, we're just kind of reamping things in here to get a CNC table. Now I know what you thought. Austin, weren't you going to build a shop? Yes, I was, but steel prices are up 40%. I wanted to build it out of steel. I'm not going to do it right now. We'll give it time. It's not a pressing issue. If prices come back down, cool. If not, they go back up. That's, I mean, it is what it is. I've adjusted my prices with inflation, just like all businesses do or businesses should. And that's uh, just kind of where we're at. Um, I am outgrowing the shop, I'd say uh, pretty fast. It isn't bad in the winter or in the summer because I can use this kind of front patio cement slab I have out there. And it's actually pretty big. Um, but in the winter time, I got to shut the door, keep the heat on. I get chilly so anyways that's what i'm doing um jobs coming down the pipeline we've got um some property fences and entryways to install um stuff like that i've got into on my slow time building things i can sell on like facebook marketplace um these are two sets of trailer ramps this one's made out of all angle iron that one's um, angle iron with C channel on the sides. Um, I can't remember exactly how much they cost me to make them, but like these are like 190 bucks, and I think those are like 225. So that is pretty much the welding lifestyle update. I mean, I could go way more in depth, but I don't. I don't want to get crazy. The main thing on this video that I want to get my point straight across is. If you think you need a piece of equipment, that doesn't mean go out and buy a brand new one. I thought I needed a plate break. I built one for pennies on the dollar, what I could have bought one for. Now that I have it, I've used it, it's become part of my uh, more routine, I feel I can justify spending money getting a better one. A trailer. A trailer was really, really hard for me because I wanted one, but it um, it doesn't necessarily bring in money. It makes us more efficient, which means we can get money done faster, but um, I'm not super worried about being efficient right now is because I still am having gaps in my schedule. So, like, I guess I can, I'm okay with taking a little longer on jobs or longer on prep for jobs because 
jobs aren't coming in so fast, I can't keep up with the equipment I have now. That being said, I wanted to get into bigger markets and do them quickly, so I upgraded my generator to a engine driven welder, and that has been great. You don't have to buy brand new equipment when you're getting into uh, a side hustle or even a new career. The CNC table, unless I come across a good deal used, I probably will buy brand new just because there's a lot of moving parts and I'm not super um, educated on them. Um, I like to buy a new one you know, and so on and so forth. When I can buy new equipment, I will, but I have to at least show myself that, you know, money is there to make it back. When I bought this welder, it's because I needed to be more efficient on boilers, so I knew the money was there to make it back. When I bought that welder, I realized it was taking me a really long time out on jobs, and I was actually able to raise my rates because I could do jobs faster. What that means is, um, say you're making a hundred dollars an hour, but it takes you three hours to do the job versus a guy who's making $125 an hour, but it takes him two hours to do the job. It's actually cheaper to go with the guy who's making 120, 20, $125 an hour. That's kind of the same thing. I realized if I upgraded equipment, I could raise my rates, be more efficient and be faster. I needed to do it there. I didn't necessarily need to do it with, you know, bending sheet metal and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then uh, two more things, just real quick for you. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I want to start cash flowing a farm. Um, that's true. I have kind of an equipment list that I want to get. Um, I needed a trailer, so now I can like, instead of paying someone to haul wood in for me, I can go get the wood. Basically what I do is I'm buying um, lumber mill scraps from a lumber yard and I'm cutting them up, wrapping them and selling them roadside. Um, the next thing I want to buy other than like maybe some hand tools is a tractor. I'm thinking probably like a Ford 9N. Yes, I did for the longest time have a farm all here. Um, that was a buddy of mine who lives down the road. We made an agreement that this year I would help work on it. I could use it. And then once I was done with it, he had told me he wanted to sell it. So it's gone. It's sold. He actually made a little money on the deal. I do have 40 or 50 rows of sweet corn planted out back. They're, you know, probably like 150 foot rows maybe. So that will add on. So anything I get from sweet corn or firewood bundles, I'm going to reinvest into a farm. And if I can get a tractor, then even if it needs fixed up, I'll fix it up this winter and then in the spring be able to plant more crops and hopefully in the winter I'll be able to cut firewood ahead and um, so on and so forth. Um, I'll do that and if I can get a tractor, then maybe the tractor can go do odd sides jobs. Um, my brother does excavating and every once in a while he'll run into these people who just want like a big section of land brush hogged. Um, again, just jobs like that that I could do with it. Yes, the trailer is going to get work. The reason I was doing it and I thought I should do a video of this so you guys know what it looks like, it is going to get worked. Axle's going to get moved back. All the stuff on top's going to get ripped off. Um, safety chains, jacks, lights, all that. It's 12 foot long. I have debated on extending it to a 20 foot, but I'm not sure yet because I mean, it is what it is. But uh, the last thing I want to wrap up with is uh, Fabtech. Uh, another YouTuber had mentioned, sent me a message asking if I was going to go because I'm in, for those of you that don't know, I'm in West Michigan and Fabtech this year is in Chicago. It's like a three hour drive for me. Um, the trouble is I want to go, um, but workload and... We were thinking about vac maybe going to Texas later this year. Um, I don't know if we're going to go. Um, and I would just like you guys to let me know in the comments if you would like me to bring a camera to Fabtech. Um, if there's enough people who want it, whether they're already 
a member of this channel or they haven't subscribed yet, subscribe and let me know if you'd like to see me at Fabtech. Um, maybe we can put like a meet and greet together with some of the other YouTubers who are welders, who you know are out east or wherever they are. I'm sure it would be a great thing for me to do for the channel. Um, but this channel is a hobby, and uh, I gotta be, I gotta pay my bills first, I guess. So, anyways, guys, that's gonna wrap up this video. You will see more videos from me because I, I think I've got everything straightened out with my equipment. Um, I just need to figure out a better video editing software so the videos may lag a little bit. I do apologize for that. But we're making strives to get this channel better every day. So um, look for future projects and updates around here on equipment and jobs and so on and so forth. And uh, until the next video, really all I can say is uh, don't be afraid to... Um, get into something. If you don't have the best equipment, that's okay. You, As long as you have equipment and you're getting the job done. Um, it's uh, Once you get the payload, you can buy the new trucks and the new equipment and everything will look really good. But uh, everybody started somewhere, so, you know, just start. That's my advice for, uh, for today. Just uh, go ahead, get started, and uh, learn something. So, anyways guys. Subscribe, like the video, I'll see you on the next episode.